So the next one we're going to look into is the axis. This is the vertical axis and this is the horizontal axis. And earlier we controlled the title for these axes, but now you can actually control the axis itself. So let's look at the vertical axis and this is showing the default axis. You can show the axis in thousands or millions or billions and these can be helpful if you have any specific um, you know, chart where the numbers are very, very large. But you can control those options. I'm going to click more options and this will open up this dialog box here where you can control. In this case, the minimum and the maximum are all set to auto. So Excel, based on the numbers it's finding in the data, will automatically pick the minimum and the maximum that you'd want to use for this chart. And you can control this and say, I always want the maximum or minimum here to be, let's say 100. And this will change Excel. And when I click close, you will see that we have changed the minimum value here on this axis. So similarly, you can change the maximum. And I did undo. And now I'm going to double click on this axis directly. And that will also open up this um, format axis dialog box. And same way, I'm going to reset it to auto and maximum can be controlled. The other two things here, major unit and minor unit. So the major unit is you see here the lines and that there's a tick mark on this side as well. And that's because the major tick mark is outside and we don't have a minor tick mark. But let me just so show the minor tick mark, let's say inside. So you can see here the major tick mark is outside like right next to 400 600 and then the minor tick marks are inside the major unit is 200 automatically here so you see for every 200 there is a major tick mark and the minor is 40 so each 40 units there will be a minor tick mark and you if you don't want it you can just choose none you can also control if you want to choose a fixed amount for these major and minor units and the important thing here is you can control the units shown. In this case, we have just small numbers, but we can choose, for example, hundreds. And Excel will now convert this instead of showing the actual value directly, it'll show them in hundreds. So, for example, instead of having 1,400 at the top, now we have 1,400. So that's nothing but 1,400. And if I click this, it doesn't display the units label, and now it shows hundreds. So when you deal with large numbers, you can use this option to set, for example, if you're dealing with millions of uh, revenue for a company and your data is in millions, you can just choose millions as the display unit, even though your raw data actually is displaying the numbers in large numbers, you can just choose millions or anything, which is a large number here, to make the chart easier to read. Because if you have a 10-digit uh, number here, that's not going to be very convenient for users to read but you can convert them into millions or billions or even hundreds. So let me choose none because we have small values here. And lastly, you can control where this horizontal axis is crossing the vertical axis. If it's if this is automatic here, but you can say I want the axis to or always cross at zero. For example, if you have negative numbers uh, in your chart, then instead of having the horizontal axis at the bottom, you can say the horizontal axis should cross at zero, and that would be a better way to visualize the day charts in some cases. But the point is Excel gives you the freedom to control that, so that's great. And lastly, the number format, again, we've talked about it. You can control how the numbers are shown here. You can either choose this way or you, even you can choose the dollars or currency format to show up on the axis itself. And now I'm going to close that. Now let's look at the horizontal axis options. And uh, this will be somewhat similar to the vertical axis, but there are some differences. For example, we have here five books shown. And let's say in, in a certain case, uh, where we have lots of such values and you want to control how many values are displayed and then you can choose for a specify interval unit and I'm just going to show this for illustration. This is not a good example for this. Um, this is not a good case of where you want to show fewer items. For example here I put interval unit as two. So you see the first book and you see the third book and the fifth book 
And again, this is not a good example of where you don't want to show a specific label because in this case, each book needs a label. For example, let's say you're doing dealing with dates and each of them is, let's say, January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th. So instead of showing every day as a label because it gets really congested here, then you could say, I only want to show every fourth or third label. So Jan 1st and then Jan 2nd will not be shown, but then Jan 3rd will be shown. But when you look at the data, it's very intuitive that this should be Jan 2nd, right? So in such cases, it's good to use this to make your data more visually easy to read. But in this case, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm going to turn it back to automatic and you can see a preview here. And you can um, tell Excel to automatically choose this based on the data or if you wanted to treat this as a date, then you can do that. And we talked already about the tick marks and similar to the horizontal axis crossing that here you can choose when the vertical axis should be crossing. And if I choose, for example, category three and you see that the axis has now moved to here. And this is, again, not a great example. So I'm going to let Excel automatically choose it. And Excel is usually good in its automatic selection. So that should work. And then you can control the, the number format for this axis also. And the final item that we have here is the grid lines. And grid lines are these lines that you saw that you see here um, that are drawn across from left to right. These are called the horizontal grid lines and there are major and minor. So let me choose major and minor. You can see that there's a major uh, grid line here and then this, these ones are minor. And I would say, for example, just show me the major. And general suggestion is you don't show a very thick or a visible grid line. So for example, I can choose a very light color here and you can still see the line, but it's not you know, distracting you from the data. Uh, this is something which I would recommend um, if you're presenting a chart. So this looks much nicer and cleaner and the focus is on the columns and the numbers. Um, similarly, you can have vertical grid lines if you need. And let me just show you. There you go, the vertical grid lines. And uh, you can choose not to have any if you... Horizontal grid lines, none. Sorry, I should have said vertical grid lines, none. Horizontal grid lines, just the major. Okay, now we're back.